place up in the house on a Tuesday night up in here in the Metamorphosis Outreach Empowerment Center. Y'all know how we do on Tuesday nights, the highly motivated. Amen. Amen. I don't care if it's just one in here in these chairs. Amen. We're going to go. We're going to go forth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, Father God, for you are worthy, God. We thank you, God, for the gift of salvation, God, on tonight, Father God. And we and those may continue to ask, what must I do to be saved, Father God? And we may be an awesome witness, Father God, to the world, Father God, which is needed now, Father God. We thank you for your word, for it is a living word, Father God. We thank you, God, for participation on tonight, God. We thank you, God, that your spirit dwell in this place, God. And we lift you up, Father God, even as, as it lifts and works towards the airways, Father God. Those online, Father God, overseas, Father God, we thank you, God. And we praise you, God. If it be just one getting saved on tonight, the gift of salvation, God, we thank you in advance right now. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give God some praise in this place. I ain't trying to pump you or prime you, man, but God is just that good. Amen. I know he's been good to me, man, in my life, man. So tonight I'm going to be talking about can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? And subtitle, what must I do to be saved? Can I get a witness and what must I do to be saved? Amen. When we say, what must I do to be saved? What are we saved from? Come on, give me some shout outs. Saved from sin? Saved, whoa, that's a good one. Saved from my old crazy selves. I just added crazy in there. But saved from myself. What about the penalties of sin? Amen. Sin, hey, we saved from all that. Amen. But again, in religion, and people are walking around in religion and tradition, and they so-called think they're Christians. They think they're saved, but they're really not. Just because they check the block and they come to church, amen, and we're going to talk about it. Amen. Can I get a witness? What is a witness? Give me some shout-outs. Witness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So bearing the truth, somebody that has witnessed something. Amen. First first account, been there. Amen. So so how do we witness to others? Witness to see something, evidence, proof, have knowledge of, personal observation or experience. Why are these seats not filled? And why are these seats not filled on Sundays? Why? Because there's good word going forth in this place. Amen. How can one hear without a preacher or a teacher? And that's the word. But they have to come hear it. You know, seeing it online is one thing, but it's some about being up in the atmosphere and hearing that sound and feeling the power of God in the place. Amen. And again, we have that distorted projection of God out in the world now. Nobody's talking about God. Nobody's witnessing anymore. Nobody's telling their testimonies. Yet they believe God and they say they have faith, but they're not sharing that. They're not witnessing what God has done for them in their life. I know there's something in, down in you that God has done for you that you need to tell somebody about it. When we first got saved, We'd run out there. We couldn't wait to tell somebody about what God has done. And when we were Christmas Christians, we were the first ones in the parking lot before they even opened up the door. We was waiting. We was ready. We was excited about the things of God. But nobody's talking about God now. Why is that? That's why these seats are not filled. Nobody's witnessing anymore. And we were talking about back in the day, we used to hit the streets. Come on, young ministers. Hit the streets, drop us off in the van, we knocking on doors. And, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses, they still doing it. But what happened to us as Christians? We gotten too cute. It's too hot outside for us. We uncomfortable. Well, a sacrifice. Jesus was uncomfortable. 
Can you even imagine what he went through for us? And we have the audacity to sit on our blessed assurance. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So we have to start witnessing again. And in August, we're going to start back. We're going to start past the plate back. We're going to start, man, somebody take charge. We're going to do a car wash. We're going to go back to our car washes and giving out food, past the plate. Let's get back at it. Tell somebody. The whole month of August, invite as many people as you can to church. Our outreach month, August. Amen? Amen? So now when we talk about the things of Jesus, the, 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 the jacked up projection of Jesus, now everybody thinks and it sounds cultic. It sounds cultic or religious because nobody's mentioning it. So when you say something about Jesus or church or coming to Christ, it sounds cultic. That's a coach. That's religion. I'm going to stay away from that because when people don't understand something, they fear it and they back off. And I was talking last Tuesday about the watermelon and a lot of adults and children don't know watermelons have seed because they've been selling seedless watermelons forever. And they don't even know that a watermelon actually has seeds and where our food comes from and farms. And the same thing with Christianity. Somewhere we missed it, missed a generation, and we hadn't been talking about it. And the people just don't know. They don't know because we ain't saying nothing. We ain't doing nothing. And Pastor talked about faith on Sunday, living by faith, not just believing it. But you got to live it. You got to live it. You got to live it out. People have to see you. It's not that you get up, hey, look at me and do that, but it has to be in your heart. Amen? Can I get a witness? Amen. We got to get out there and talk to the unsaved, the untaught, and the unchurched. Unsaved, the untaught, and the unchurched. We got to let them know about God and the things of God. In this time and era, it's needed. Amen. Because people be texting me some crazy stuff. I was like, man, come on, Christian. What are you texting me that for? I'm, I'm not worried about that. Again, can I get a witness? I know you saw something. I know you got evidence or proof of a healing or something that God has done for you. Have knowledge of. You got the Bible. You got his word. Personal observation or you ex you've experienced it. Amen. You've been saved. Amen. So again, you know, also, you know, I've seen a lot of soldiers coming in and people inviting everybody in, but it has to be like a sponsorship. You just can't invite somebody to church and leave them there. You got to explain to them what's going on. The spirit is moving. What is he doing? What is she doing? What does the word say? Are you okay, bro? You understand what's going on? You good? So, Amen. We have to do that. Or they'll leave worse off than they came and say, I didn't understand nothing. But even with that, and I tell y'all, if they don't even understand nothing, we say that they will know that they were loved when they left out these doors. So love the hell out of them. They'll know that they were loved. If they don't get nothing else when they come here, they know that they were loved in the Metamorphosis Outreach and Parma Center. Amen. Again, them distorted projections of God, we have to get rid of them. And that's what it is on TV. And, 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 and there was another word she said. Uh, what was that word, man? Transgression. Transgression. Man, that's a serious word. And you see it on TV, in the news, and all over the world. <laughs> Things that are out of bound. Immoral. <laughs> we see it. But it's becoming a new norm. But what are we doing? Every day on TV, we see them taken away from Christianity and the believers, but nobody's fighting to get that back. And finally, after the school shooting, they might put prayer back in, but it took all those little innocent souls to die for that. Why? That's ridiculous. We never thought we'd be that, this way in the United States. And all the other countries are looking at us like, wow. What in the world's going on with the United States? Keep your eye on China. 
Because, again, nobody thought 9-11 could happen. Black eye, bam. Man, that happened to us. We jack around, we'll be on CNN. We'll be walking around, jacking around, wanting food and clothes. In China, the superpower. Oh, it can happen. We are a great nation. What happened to, you know, uh, what, what, what's on the dollar bill? And one nation under God. What happened to one nation under God? What happened? How did we get here? These are the things we need to be thinking about and spiritually, not politically. We need to put our face to the ground. We need to be praying. Stop. See this quietness? Sometimes we need to be quiet and listen and hear what the world is saying and hear what God is saying. It's loud out there, but you need to hear God's voice. Right now, we need to hear his voice. Like we know, like we know, like we know. Spend more time with him. A personal relationship with God. Folks say they're Christians. They say they're believers, but no personal relationship. They just simply say, I believe and I have faith. Man. Again, saved. Jesus saves us from our sins by his word. We got to read the word through which he calls sinners to repentance. What is repentance? To change course, to turn. That's that about face, to turn away from. And while we're going, when we turn away from, where are we headed to? We have to start going back towards God. Amen. And sometimes we're running so far away, but we're looking back, and we don't even understand where we're going. And I heard, you know, an illustration of somebody driving. It's like someone driving a car, and they're going down the highway, and they're going at a high rate of speed, but their head is turned all the way around, looking back. How dangerous is that? And that's how it is spiritually. (laughs) We're going in a direction, but we got our heads turned. Why are we looking back for? We ain't even using the rearview mirror. We got our heads totally turned. That's destruction. Repentance. Turn away. Never to go back. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And then even after we get saved... That doesn't cancel out repentance. We still have to repent. And we have to recognize that we sinned (laughs) and still repent. I don't care how long. We all are still sinners. We still have struggles on any given day or Sunday or night. It's up here in the mind. It's a battlefield. It trips. And you're like, Lord, how in the world was I thinking that? Where did that come from? Get thee behind me, Satan. Right now. So again, he saves us from our sins by his word, which he calls us to repentance in Matthew 9 and 13. Amen. And also to be saved in Romans 10. We know the story. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess you are saved. And it's just that simple to get saved. There's nothing deep and kooky. But again, after that, there are some things that you have to do as a Christian, and a lot of folks simply are not doing it. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about conversion. And we've all had a conversion converting uh, conversion experience we all have a testimony in here a time that when hey man we got converted amen and and for the example in acts how about Paul from Saul to Paul this guy hated the Christians was on his way probably to gather some more up and put them in jail or kill some and then he had a conversion an experience with God and most of us in here we knew it was God (laughs) Or we wouldn't have never came to God. 
I know at my time and point, because we all want to tell our B story, but we don't want to tell that A. Amen? <laughs> Cause folks probably would think different of you, but that's what we need to tell people sometimes, and sometimes we don't want to talk about that or think about it because it was, it was bad. But sometimes God will use you, and he'll let you say that. But that conversion... I knew it was God because I was walking around talking about I'm saved. <laughs> I was play play saved. I, I, I said I was a Christian, but something happened in my life where I was about to lose everything, everything. <laughs> and have to look at my wife and look at my kids and what people are going to say. I knew that was God really getting my attention and saying, hey, you playing. I said, no, nah, I'm good, God. I'm for real, for real saved. I'm for real, for real saved. And we can all remember that day that we got converted, amen. So, again, somebody's story of co conversion, or, and we all have one, you know, and we think about the testimonies, and Brother V. Hill kind of hit on salvation in the testimonies and, 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 and how he got saved and how people get saved and how they get converted, amen. And most of the time, it's dealing with emotions. It was emotional. And we go through, and it's emotional. And sometimes, you know, I want people to feel what I feel in church. You know, you, they're emotional at the movies. <laughs> They're emotional at functions. You can see the emotion. They're emotional at, 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 at football and basketball games, but they come into the house of the Lord and Yep, hard as a rock, hard as woodpecker lips, as I say. There they go. But again, the emotions are involved, and, 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 and we know that. Amen. So, so again, conversion, conversion. Uh, Christians have been converted in a variety of circumstances with various levels of emotions, various levels. So we all got saved and converted on different levels. And, uh, and and again, we we don't serve a fair God, amen, we serve a just God. We don't serve a fair God, we serve a just God because he knows the capacity of all of us and every step that we take and every morning we get up, he knows our capacity and what we can take. So everybody got saved emotionally or converted on a different level than the other one because what I went through and got converted in, somebody else would have fainted or they just would have quit and died. <laughs> Amen. So, again, different levels in that. Amen. All right. So let's talk about, so anybody got anything on conversion? No? How about repentance? Again, the repentance of sin. Both turning from sinful ways and turning towards God. Turn from your sinful ways and go back towards God. Amen. I know it's tough. It's tough. With everything on the news and people and, they, and, 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 and their conversations. It's tough out there right now. Again, wrong is right and right is wrong now. Y'all see it. And some people just jump on the bandwagon. You have to be totally committed, totally sold out for God. Amen. In this time and in this season, you can't be the spiritual chameleon. You can't be the spiritual or church religious chameleon. You one way at church. You ain't invited nobody to church because the way you act at work. Or the way you act in your neighborhood, on the job. You ain't invited nobody because you are halyard at work and you cussing everybody out and you mean and you ain't invited nobody. You ain't got no testimony, but you're in here. You're religious. Amen. Yes, ma'am. You, you talked about repentance mm -hmm. and um <laughs> okay um i think we have to remember as people of god that repentance is a process mm -hmm. and we want repentance to be instantaneous in people mm -hmm. uh, we want them to come to the altar and we pray some magic words over them blow on them and um 
all kind of theatrics you see at, at, at some altars now, mm -hmm. which uh, God personally is sick of, just tired of it. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to start exposing some things pretty soon here. It's, it's just, it's been a week for me, okay? So y'all just bear with me. <laughs> but uh, I think we have to remember that repentance is a process. Yes. And in the midst of that, as Christians, we are in, we, we, we say we're walking the love walk, but we're not. Yeah. Um, we still don't even know what the love of Christ is. I'm still learning mm -hmm. what the love of Christ is because I can't put myself in 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 4 through 7 all the time. Right. And if I can't put myself in those scriptures all the time, then I'm not operating in love none of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we operate in love when we want to. Right. We're patient when we want to be. Mm -hmm. We're kind when we want to be. We don't envy or boast when we don't want to. We're, not, we're arrogant when we want to be. Mm -hmm. We're rude when we want to be. Mm -hmm. We're irritable and resentful when we want to be. Mm -hmm. And then other times, we're not. If someone looks the part or looks like me, I have patience with them. Mm -hmm. If someone don't look the part and don't look like me, my patience is gone. Come on. So that means I really don't understand what the love of Christ right. is. Right. I need to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and figure it out before I begin to witness to anybody. Mm -hmm. I would rather someone not witness at all if they're not going to witness in love. I'd rather right. you sit in church, keep your mouth shut, and don't say nothing to nobody. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an understanding of what it means to give somebody the love of Christ. Because you're going to do one or two things after they encounter you. They're going to be closer to God or farther away. Yes. According to what you say yes. and what you do. So the one thing I'm learning right now, if I can't make Cynthia shut up, I won't say nothing. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I can't let the Christ in me speak, the Ruach breath in me speak, yep. then I won't say anything. Yes. Because it all boils down. We, keep, we say it all the time, but I'm beginning to see it differently through different eyes, eyes now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we read the scripture. I read it every morning and every Tuesday and realize, ah, you walk in love about 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, seats will stay empty. They'll stay empty because this is just a time of darkness. That's the main reason they're going to stay empty. But another reason they'll stay, they're empty is because we say we walk in love, but we really walk in it about 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. And we want people's repentance to be instantaneous. Right. We don't want to walk the process with them. Mm -hmm. Some people's process may be years. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to walk mm -hmm. the process? Yeah. We had a young woman stand up and give her conversion on Sunday and say the day she was turned from homosexuality. Mm -hmm. She didn't tell us the process, but tore the church up. Yeah. Because it was in line with the word. Mm -hmm. The minister was talking about love and called her up for something else. Mm -hmm. And she stopped in the middle of the service and just began to speak. Yes. But that's the kind of love that it's going to take to let someone see the operating in the spirit of perversion. They don't understand the operating in perversion mm -hmm. until you show them. Right. But we can't get past secluding them right. to show them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Simply, if I can't help you, I ain't going to hurt you. If I can't help you, I'm going to leave you alone. I ain't going to hurt you. If I can't help you. Holy Spirit said it. Hey, back off from that. Hey, I ain't going to hurt you because some people keep pushing and pressing. So, again, like she said, you have to build up to it in the same way in faith, repentance. And sometimes that old, that old demon, that old pride gets in there and people don't even recognize that they've sinned and that they need to repent. They don't see it and they don't know it. <laughs> so, again... They think they're all right. They think they're fine. And there's a lot of people out there that think they're okay. And they think they're fine. Everybody's opinion is a fact now. Because I said it, um, that's what it is. Who are you? I don't even know you. Say it again. values versus the biblical sense of it and um, even within the body of Christ we're grabbing onto that so what is good in the world what is well in the world what is okay in the world is now becoming okay within the body of Christ and within the body of I won't say believers I'm just going to say Christian because I think if you're a believer then you understand that it's not mm -hmm. um, and so that has infiltrated the church and so now love is not really Christ's love. It's me accepting your sin. And if I refuse to accept your sin, then I'm not loving. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we have, even love has become polluted yes. in us mm -hmm. because we want to make love what we think it should be, mm -hmm. what we feel it is. Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel like 
my feel about my husband about you, then I don't love you. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think there's a lot of of distortion amongst the body of believers and the Christians that's causing the lack of witnessing, the ability to witness, um, and it's just holding everything back because many of us may think we are witnessing, but we're witnessing a distorted belief. Come on. We're, we're witnessing government. We're witnessing politics. We're witnessing the news. We're not witnessing the Bible. We're not witnessing Christ. Yeah, bye. Yes, ma'am. I, I learned a very important lesson um, earlier this week. And I think sometimes, my professor said it best, I think sometimes we, we seek out the Jesus that fits our circumstance. Mm -hmm. And we preach that Jesus. But that's not the gospel Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get a hand on the gospel Jesus, we're never going to fill seats right. and because we have a grasp on the Jesus that I have made fit me. Mm -hmm. And I've used scripture erroneously to back it up. Mm -hmm. So now, in essence, what I've done is I've lost Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now I'm preaching a religion. I'm, I'm preaching a God. I'm preaching anything else. But what I've done is I have not took the time to find out but he says, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. But we teach a Jesus that fits our culture, our personality, our upbringing, our, our, our own belief system that because of how we've been raised. We have to get, I tell people, I'm a Christian first, I'm black second. And a lot of people can't understand that. Right. I'm not black first. I'm not going to jump on all of your movements with you. Come on. Because some of those things are anti-Christ. Yes, sir. So my first obligation is to the gospel. Let's go. And we, as Christians, we had to get to, the, to where that's the point. Glory. And sometimes we're so black. I can only speak for black people because I'm black. <laughs> sometimes we're so black that we lose Jesus. You in there now. Because we don't <laughs> realize that Jesus did not come for a denomination. Right. He came for, to redeem those that were lost. Yes. Those that were lost is every nation of people. Every nation. And we get so stuck on what someone has done to us and how they're treating us that we have our own prejudices mm -hmm. when it comes to, to really teaching Jesus to someone who really needs to know him. And then we don't even know exactly what he is because we haven't took the time yes. to bring him from Genesis 1 to John 1. Yes. Somewhere along in the middle, we lost the mission of what God had for Israel. And we got to get it back. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what God is doing, watch Israel. Yes. You want to know where God is coming, watch Israel. They're embracing homosexuality. We're getting close. You have to watch Israel. We can't watch us. We have to watch Israel. And uh, as I watch Israel, I realize it's time to make a decision. Because mm -hmm. there's some people sitting inside buildings like this who are not going to leave here. Yes. They're going to be left behind. Amen. So we have to realize something. It's t time now. Yep. Choose this day. Mm -hmm. whom you will serve. It's really time to do that. We're really getting in the time where it's time to do that. We are here. And I pray for Israel often. I pray for Israel often. Some folks see don't even ever mention Israel. <laughs> Come on. Stay off of that other stuff. I can't even stomach the news now. I don't watch it. I try not to watch it. I try to stay in the spirit. Amen. Some positive. Amen. So again, faith in Jesus. And Pastor talked about it, just not believing about it, but living it out. Living it out. And me and the brothers was talking earlier about James. Amen. James 2. Amen. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does, but does not have any works? Can this faith save him? If a brother or sister without clothes and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, <laughs> be warm, be filled, praying for you, believe God, and you send them off, what kind of faith is that? And that happens all the time. And folks come up. I had somebody come today at the gas station, and I blessed them real good. And they were stuck. Like, man, like, you just tripled what, 
what we're trying to work towards and we need. And, you know, and you could smell that guy from, from my truck. I could smell him before he even got to me. But I do have discernment. I just don't give out money, but I blessed him. And I said, man, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And he said, man, yeah, God. <laughs> and he ran to the truck and with his girlfriend. And, and then I left. But again, man, living out faith, man. <laughs> no matter how they look, what color, or how they smell, man. Because that's who ought to be in here trying to get them in here. But what if they do ever come in here one day and they smell and they sit next to you and hold your nose and acting like you're going to hyperventilate and fall out because they got alcohol on their breath? And I remember when I had alcohol on my breath and I sat all the way in the back because I didn't want to talk or say nothing because it smelled like alcohol. And I just wanted to go to church to make my wife happy. <laughs> Next thing you know, I was in the front row. And I was sitting on the edge. And I was trying to get everything. I wanted all of the word. No distractions. I didn't want to see nothing in front of me. Nobody on their phone. On the front. So I want it all. I'm on the front. I'm taking notes. But it was embarrassing at first, I thought, because I couldn't get to the scripture. I thought if you in the front row, you better be able to get to the scripture fast. <laughs> then I just fake the funk and turn to somewhere and act like I'm in the right chapter. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on. But I thank God for Jesus. Hey, I ain't going to start right now. <laughs> Woo. Jesus man by faith you just can't send folks off I'm praying for you they still hungry they still thirsty they hot or they cold and you want them to believe God mm, mm, mm. Woo. what good is it in the same way, faith, if it doesn't have works, it's dead by itself. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith from my works. And then if it, go, it goes all the way down to 20, and it says even the demons and the devils believe. Even the demons and the devils believe. Come on. That was in uh, James 2, 14 through 20. So James 2, 14 through 20, it said even the demons know, and they recognize the name of Jesus. Like Mufasa, say it again. Jesus, say it again. Say it again. It's Jesus. Amen. And we love Jesus. Amen. A new life in Christ. Amen. Come on. Come on. Don't start nothing. Now go on now. Go on now. Go on. <laughs> go on. Go. <laughs> Woo. The ABCs of Christ. Amen. The ABCs. Amen. That's what we need. Simple ABCs. Amen. Again. And then that can I get a witness? Be ready to follow. You know, ask, you know folks going to ask you some questions. If you're not that familiar with the word, then some of them will try to take you down a rabbit trail and they will try to embarrass you. I had some Muslims one time. It was two of them. They tried to gang up on me. I wasn't going down a rabbit trail with you. I just walk off. But you're not finna try to embarrass me in front of people to make you think that you are senior over me or over Christ and whatever you believe in. Amen. Again, give, avoid giving more information than needed in the witnessing. Don't jump to conclusions. That's what they want you to do. Speak clearly. Clearly. Of what the word says, not what you said. Again, get in a nice, quiet environment away from all the other folks. 
Amen. So again, God's power and his presence. Amen. Where was the freedom of sin? We have been promised it's here, but we, we, we have to recognize it. Amen. So again, sometimes people are caught up because if the illustration of in life, some people are killing themselves and they don't know it and they're lukewarm. And what does the Bible say about a lukewarm? Spew you out. But if I put a, a pot of water on the stove and it's cold, ice cold, and you put a frog in it, it might jump out. If you heat it up real hot, it's going to jump out. But if it's lukewarm and you put the frog in it, it's nice and what? It's nice and, com nice and comfortable, and then here comes the heat. And the next thing you know, what? You cooked. And that's how it is with some Christians. And they in that lukewarm pot of water, and they going on and on, and the next thing you know, they're finished. They're devoured. The enemy has killed them. I know that's kind of graphic, but... But again, <laughs> lukewarm, just chilling, just comfortable, just con complacent. The military ain't your source. The job ain't your source. And so many people get it twisted. And that, that, that can change us in, in a second. I know I'm getting paid on the 1st and 15th. What I can say, what I want to say, I can do what I want to do. I can treat people any kind of way I want to treat them. The devil is a lie. Entitlement. And that's that entitled spirit around here. I can't stand it. Joker, you came from dirt. You came from nothing. You got the audacity to up in here and be all prideful and act like he ain't done nothing for you. Oh, man. Come on. My bad. Man. So, again, our new life in Christ. We have to be a witness. Again, we've been converted. Amen. And closely com re related to conversion is the act of regeneration. Amen. So, and some argue that, you know, conversion comes before regeneration or regeneration comes before the other. But the difference with the regeneration is the Holy Spirit is involved. And when you get converted to regeneration, the Holy Spirit is involved. Jesus comes in you. And you don't have to say hallelujah 500 times real fast. <laughs> you know, y'all seen it in churches. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Like, is that how we learn to speak in tongues? No, it comes with it, but you have to believe God and by faith. We don't have to do that. Man, yep, manufactured Holy Spirit, and others mimicking others. Yours may be, hey, shankarabo, mine may be, ba, 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 ba. That's me speaking in, in my unknown, and it's all different. <laughs> you ain't got to try to mimic anybody. What does your heart say? What does your spirit say? Amen. And again, regeneration is different from conversion because while conversion is, is a conscious act of repentance toward God and in faith in Jesus, regeneration is an unconscious transformation brought about by the Holy Ghost. Right in that split second in that moment. Because I used to say, man, I want that. And I see him at the altar. And I see him and I, I know the spirit was moving it right at that moment. Something changed. And at the altar, I touched hands with a guy. And just that minute, something changed. I blacked out. And when you see people out, man, it's not a joke. It's not fake. I was there for about an hour. I was gone. But my life has never be the, been the same, amen. So, again, our new life in Christ. We are Christians, man. We are Christ-like. We are disciples. We are ambassadors for Christ. Don't be a, a spiritual chameleon. Don't try to fit in with everybody. You're peculiar because you were bought back. 
You're not weird. You were bought back. You are saved. <laughs> Sometimes we don't ever have to say a word. They can just see our lifestyle and how we operate. Not that we cocky or we arrogant. We just confident in who we are and who we know. <laughs> Let's get at it, man. Let's get after the things of God. No fear. You can't stop me. I was standing in, on the patio door, and there was a waltz, and it kept flying at my eyes. I didn't blink. I didn't say, you can't touch me. You can't get to me. <laughs> and I just, I just thank God that, man, he protects us. Just something that small. It, it don't take much for me. If I see a number seven cab drive by, hey, man, God, God's got me on his mind. <laughs> Hey, man, I'm just that faithful. A number three calf, man. <laughs> the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. A white dove just blew by me. Glory to God. I'm blessed. I'm just, I believe God just that much. Amen. So again, apart from the work of the Holy Spirit, a person's heart remains hardened. So you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're truly a believer... Your faith will turn into faithfulness. Your faith will turn into faithfulness. Faithfulness in God. I don't know no better. You said no, but God says yes. Or God, whatever, whatever your will says, Father. Amen. Amen. So again, and we're going to be closing. So we talked about conversion. We talked about regeneration. We talked about repentance of Sin, we talked about faith in Jesus. We got to be faithful, not just believing it, but again, living it. Our new life in Christ, and there's maybe some online, maybe some sitting in here that truly don't even really know Christ, that has never had a personal relationship with him, but you've just been checking the block. <laughs> You've best been going through the motions. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you truly have faith? Do you know what salvation is? Have you been converted? Elder? Yes, sir. A uh, couple things. Um, you know, it, in our maturity, you begin to notice a few things mm -hmm. that not, not all conversions look the same. Right. Mm -hmm. You notice that not everyone's salvation looks the same. Right. I think we do uh, church and God a great disservice if we try to make it all look the same. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is my point. Because you don't look like me, you don't sound like me, you mm -hmm. don't talk like me, mm -hmm. you don't walk like me, right. then you can't be saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When that may be the farthest from the truth. Yes. We say that it's a process, but I don't allow your process to be as long as my process. Come on. <laughs> gotcha. So you can't be saved. Mm. We, right. we put... I guess what I'm saying is we put stipulations mm -hmm. on salvation, mm -hmm. all depending on who you are, mm -hmm. where you are, yes. and what you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. We put stipulations on it. Uh, right. And one of the things we learned this weekend, uh, uh, the, the, the apostle said, well, she can't be saved because she got too many tattoos. Mm. <laughs> she can't be saved because her, her dress ain't long enough. Mm. She can't be saved because she don't look like Come on. somebody. She mm -hmm. can't be. And, and, and I begin to think, my God, is that us? Yeah. Come on. Amen. Is that us? Yeah. Is that the church? Come on. Amen. Because it, it's easy to come in here and share God here. But because maybe I don't approach somebody because they don't smell like me. Right. They don't. They don't look like me mm -hmm. outside these four walls. Yeah. 
Do I let them go by? Right. Man, <laughs> that's true. Come and, on. And, you know, he don't he don't fit the bill. Jesus. So I ain't even wasting my breath. Come on. So we judging. Yeah. You know, we talk about prejudice. Yes. But sometimes we can be just as prejudiced. My wife said it. Amen. We, 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 we can. We, we probably worse than some other folks. Come on. So uh, <laughs> our job is simply this. The commission says, teach Jesus, teach preach Jesus, Jesus yes. so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows. We, we don't get a, a chance to uh, put sp special stipulations on who receives and who don't. Right. Amen. Because mm -hmm. we don't know. We don't know. He's preached that all may know. All may know. Amen. That's it, sir. Yes. I, I was just going to say, as soon as... Um, I heard Minister Kim saying, you know, um, is that us? I, this is just personally. That's the one thing I miss about owning the restaurant. Mm -hmm. it, it's not the hard work. It's just being able to, to, it was all the people that came in. Yeah. The, the, the tattoo shop owners and the different people and just being able to be in there and to serve them food and to love on them and talk to them. Like, like somebody had asked me, it's like, do you want to, I was like, I don't you know, want to work that hard as far as the, the labor of it. I said, but what I miss, I said, is the people. People, man. Fellowship. Oh, my gosh. The it servanthood was, of it. Jesus, that, that's what Just being a servant, man. Yes. Yes. Elder. Uh, hey. I have one, too. <laughs> I wanted to say, too, that I love um, remembering, too, that the Bible says some plant, some water, but it's God who caused it increase. So don't ever discount your seed yeah. or the type of water you may have. You may have tap water. Amen. You may have Aquafina. Mm -hmm. yeah. But don't discount what you're putting and you're yeah. sowing and mm -hmm. you're planting, living your life. You may never have said a word to anybody, but your disposition at work planted a seed yes. that Minister Kim may come along and pour some water on yeah. and let God get the glory from the increase. Mm -hmm. So even just remembering that, you know, you may not have words at work, but does your light shine? Yes. Come on. Woo! And we was just talking to a couple of brothers, and and a lot of you may have invited some people to church. And I was like, hey, you planted that seed. Now, somebody else or a situation or something's going to come along and water it. And then they're going to show up one day when God says so. And then he's going to give the increase. The spirit's going to move in this place. Yes, sir. I just wanted to piggyback off what Minister Kim said, mm -hmm. like how we all don't look the same. And I think we all look different because, like, people, they, they attach themselves to what they can relate to. Yes. So, like, if I try to, like, witness to an older gentleman, mm -hmm. like, somebody 50, they'd be like, oh, this young cat don't know what you're talking right. about. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But if Mr. Kim come to him and approach right. him, mm -hmm. he can relate. And yeah. then also, like, vice versa. If I got a 20-year-old or something, 30-year-old, right. mm -hmm. Mr. Kim come, oh, he think mm -hmm. he my daddy. Right. You know, yeah. He sound like my daddy, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but mm -hmm. then if he see me, and he's like, oh, man, this mm -hmm. guy my, my age, mm -hmm. and he uh, out here doing all this and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Amen. And there's something they can relate to. Yes. That's how you win people. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And then and with the young people, man, trying to learn that language. You got to learn that language. You just can't roll on them, roll up on them like this old hard dude. And again, but the Holy Spirit, if you seek them, it'll tell you exactly what to say. Because going to prison, to the big house, and I'm terrified. Next thing you know, man. You're a magnet for Jesus. And when I leave, I don't remember nothing I said. But I said, to God be the glory. And, and the female with all the tattoos and, and the, the high skirt or the male, and they come in and tear the house down and they're a prophet, but you already prejudged them. You already prejudged them, but they come in and you, you trying to judge them. But then when they open their mouth, Woo! You like good God is Zion. That's from the Lord. We can't judge. By the grace of God, there go I. I used to dress that way. I used to act that way. I used to cuss that way. I used to lie that way. I used to sleep around that way. 
I used to steal that way. Uh-oh. But again, so many times we try to keep people where we met them, or people try to keep you where they met you. <laughs> Even on TV and some of these these hardcore rappers back in the day, and they trying to change their life, and people like, oh, they faking, oh. No, it's a process. Because after a while, they look back and say, man, it was nothing but God. All them drugs, all that sex, all that power, all them women, all of that, and I'm still here. And Jumping Roach and Pee Wee and everybody gone, but I'm still here. <laughs> I realized something. Um in my 56 years on this earth, you know, you, you go through a lot of things and a lot of things happen to you. And uh, you, you, at some point, you have to make a decision what, what you're going to stand for. But the one thing that I realize now is when, when testimonies are important, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we stop short because we don't want to reveal certain things about ourselves. Hey, and hey. we'll say things like, well, everybody <laughs> can't handle your story. Well, sometimes we can't handle it being out. You know, uh, we, we can't handle somebody knowing what right. we did when we were, you know, yeah. 10 or Come 12 on. or 11 right, or 13 right. or even 50. You know, so we'll hide behind it. But but a true testimony, this is what it does. This is why God said overcame by the word of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testimony. A true testimony eliminates excuses. So we have got to get used to telling the story according to the word mm -hmm. this is what i used to do right. but this is the word of god that delivered me from that just saying oh i was a whoremonger now i'm not anymore well why aren't you right the word of the testimony is just that mm -hmm. it's the word mm -hmm. the bible the scripture of the testimony that delivered me so you can't just say oh i, I had three abortions before i was 19 okay well what changed your mind on what you what you saw this is what changed my mind so it opens the doorway for you to introduce Jesus. But because we don't want to share sometimes what we've gone through, we, don't, we, 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 keep, we give people the, the uh, ability to continue having excuses. Mm -hmm. But a testimony eliminates the excuse. Yes, yes, yes. Testimony. Yes, what she said is awesome. Mm -hmm. I. Yes done some things. I've been through a lot. Yes. One day I sat down and I was going over my own life in my head. Yes. And I said, Lord, why me? Why did I have to go through all that? He said, why not? He said, why not you? Yes. Somebody's got to be able to, to tell somebody that they came through. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to be able to say, okay, God brought me through. Mm -hmm. So why not you? Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, it, it taught me, we go through, God, God purposely put us through stuff. Mm -hmm. Not for us to keep it to ourselves. Right. To, for us to testify to others about it. Yes. That God brought us through. But mm -hmm. we are, like she said, we don't want nobody to know about our little mm -hmm. creeping around the corner doing stuff we ain't got no business doing or sneaking out or drinking or whatever we did. We don't want people to know, now, oh, I'm this big time Christian. Now, I don't want you to know what I did before I got here. Mm. But the people need to know what you did before you got there. Right. Like, I, I like Joyce Myers. She don't care. She just tell it all. Yeah. She mm -hmm. tell you where she came from. Yes. She tell you it was nothing but the grace of God yes. that brought her to where she is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if it was left up to her, she'd been dead a long time ago. Yeah. And I know for me, if he had not kept me, I would have been dead a long time ago. Come on. Because when I think about the stuff that I did, and then I think back to about the stuff that he brought me through while I was doing him, but I'm still here. It's nothing but the grace of God. And it's a testimony for me to give to somebody Jesus. that's going to need it, that's, uh, that's going through the same thing that I went through. So mm. if somebody comes to you and right. they say, oh, I'm going through this and I'm going through that, and if you can relate, that's your moment to right. take them to the side and talk yeah. to them and say, hey, hey, girlfriend, listen, I understand. Been there, done that. But let me tell you how I came out and I got myself right. Come on. Can I get a witness? Come on. Come on, witness. Amen. Like I said, everybody telling that B, but they don't want to tell the A. Amen. And, and Elder, when we when we look at <laughs> when we keep people there, yeah. Oh yeah. When we Come keep on. people yeah. there, yeah. Really, what we doing is discounting the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 
we, we saying God can't do it. Right. God can't save <laughs> Elder. Mm -hmm. God can't save Kim. God can't save Cynthia. Mm -hmm. We're saying the process ain't good enough. Mm. The Holy Ghost ain't good enough. Mm. It, it's too much inside him. Mm. So what we do is we keep people there because it make us feel good. <laughs> Yeah. It, it make it seems like we have arrived. Yes, come on. Uh huh. Yeah. It keeps us secure. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care. Again, the judgmental is, I'm a Christian and I'm better than you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's that's the judgmental part. Mm -hmm. When I when I should be saying, boy, I'm no better than you. Just that. wait for the Holy Ghost to come in. That's it. And the process Jesus. will begin. We Amen. say renew by uh, the transformation is renewed because our mind is renewed. Yeah, come on. So I'm saying that mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost ain't able to change his mind. <laughs> he changed my mind. Changed my mind. Changed my heart. But he yeah. can't change his. What? So now I limit, mm -hmm. again, the power of God. Power of God. The Amen. power of God is too great for me to limit it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the whole power of God. Why did he choose him? I don't know. Right. Why did he choose me? How come he ain't got it yet? Right. How come it took you 40 years to come get on. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, and that's the things we have to say. Consider ourselves. Right. It's mm -hmm. easy to talk about other folks. Come on. Mm -hmm. But remember when you were there. By the grace of God, By the there grace go of I. God. Amen. And, and, and so many folks are worried about folks smoking and still drinking but God knows their heart and so many people want to kill people because they smoke the cigarette God ain't nowhere near worried about that yeah your body is a temple and mother as you was talking about and all the stuff you went through it, and this here it's all about sacrifice and all the hell you went through and you came through wasn't for you really it was for somebody else for somebody you to give else. that testimony Amen. just like for Jesus it was for us Amen. and all the hell I go through Amen. in faith I know it wasn't Amen. for me but it was for somebody else's good and that's how we have to think that was for somebody else's good because I'm gonna tell them how I came out and how you could come out Amen. Amen. Amen so again we talked about <laughs> you know repentance Amen, Amen. So again, we have to repent. And even after we get saved, we still have to continue to repent. I still repent. Man, I wasn't, pretty, I wasn't nice right then. Man, I didn't open the door for her. I know I should have. I know I rolled my eyes. Or I know this and that and that, and I have to still repent. I know I didn't do the very best that I could. And when I wake up tomorrow, if I wake up, then I'm going to try to do better than I did yesterday. <laughs> Because by the grace, <laughs> by his grace, he saved me. <laughs> yeah, this, this lesson is so good. I was waiting on this one. been waiting <laughs> for a long time. Uh, but just so many things, so many aspects in this. This, this, this lesson is really it's about salvation, but it's more about how we treat salvation than it is salvation. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the church, sometimes we, oh, my God, help. I'm like, Lord, help me. Because, man, I'm just a mess yeah you know just because and, and people are dying mm -hmm. and, and and we're a mess because we're, we're too focused on what they're doing mm -hmm. you know uh, we, we can't minister to them because what they're doing is so loud that is we're Come allowing on. what they're doing to overshadow what the word of God says they can be uh oh you know and so and, and, and we, we complain and we question everything and and when you begin to question that means you're doubting and you know a double mind man is unstable in all of mm -hmm. his ways not some all, all. and, mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Th this is the, the point that God is telling me. Quit questioning stuff. Yes. Come on. Don't, don't question what I can do. Yes. God said, when something bad happens to you, you question me. Mm. When something good happens to me, you said, thank you, Jesus. Uh-oh. You don't question why I chose to give you the right. blessing. Come on now. <laughs> you don't say, well, God, I don't know. I'm, I, ain't, I, I don't know. I don't understand. I, no, you just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you shout it to the rooftops that he chose you to bless you. Hallelujah. He chose you to keep you. But you never question it. God, why mm -hmm. did you do that? Oh, my God, I can't believe you allowed this to happen to me when I was 10, when I was 12. Right. You, know, you can pile on things. And this is why I say, when you're going to minister to somebody, mm -hmm. I was just sharing this just this weekend to this girl who's getting ready to walk away from marriage. I said, before you walk away, give me five minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just give me five minutes Amen. of your time. Mm -hmm. And I will never talk to you about it again. 
But we have to be willing to show people this yes. is what God can do. Yes. I know what, you, what you're thinking, but this is what God can do if you get yourself out of the way mm -hmm. and quit questioning the process. Because sometimes God will hurt you to save this one. Yeah. Amen. Can you handle it when God allow you to go through hurt so your testimony will save this one? But we don't want to go through anything. Mm -hmm. We don't want we we want our salvation to be easy. Yes. We 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 don't want to labor with anybody. Mm -hmm. We we want to make salvation what we want to make it. Yes. We we have all these stipulations on how people can be saved. When the Bible simply says, the minute you think in your heart who right. Jesus is, yes. salvation begins. Yes. The process. We say I'm not ashamed of the gospel. We say that, but we don't even understand what we're saying. Right. It's not talking about being being ashamed of teaching Jesus. I am not ashamed of what the gospel is in my life. In my life. That's right. I That's got a, what I'm not ashamed of. Testimony. I'm not Woo! ashamed of what the gospel says according to what I've done, done and gone through. You, I'm not going to allow you yes. to bring condemnation to me right. of what happened from this day behind me. Right. Amen. Come on. So we're saying, I'm not ashamed of God. No, no, no. Understand what it's really talking about. Yes. We cannot allow people to keep us where we were. That's right. I asked someone trying to remind, make me remember something at 15. Girl, I can't remember last week. Mm -hmm. You try to make me remember what I did to you at 15? <laughs> Just accept my apologies all Come I can on. tell right. you. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to stick me there, you're going to be there by yourself because I'm someplace else. Amen. And we have got to do what Jesus Christ said. That's it. The whole counsel of the Bible. Mm -hmm. We are afraid to shake dust off our feet. Uh -oh. We're afraid to walk in the whole counsel of the of God because darkness has no place with light. Mm -hmm. So we're af we're afraid to say, I will not fellowship with you because you are walking in darkness. But what I will do is show you love. Yes. What I will do is pray for you. What I will do is be light every time I'm around you. But I do not have to fellowship That's right. with you. Amen. And Amen. we have the whole counsel of the words, what we have to begin to the whole counsel of the word we cannot leave the old testament right. behind that's right because if you lose the old testament <laughs> you lose jesus come on type you have shot. to I mean, know from the beginning it was a build that up. he was there yes it's a build up yes mm -hmm. amen and the name change you know and you go back to to home and they try to call you that old name that you used to be and that's not me anymore don't call me that or my sisters and i'm like no that's not me no more. Quit looking for me there. That's not me. I'm not that dog no more. I'm not that guy no more. That's not me. So, so, so again, in the word fellowship, a lot of people take that for granted. But fellowship, if you look up and study fellowship, it's a little deeper than just getting together. <laughs> fellowship, look up fellowship. Fellowship is covenant. It's not just, you know, breaking bread and eating and hanging out. Well, we fellowship and look up fellowship. It's more than that. It's covenant. It and then when you're talking about covenant and we can get into blood and, and <laughs> intimacy and what's that book? The red something scarlet? Red, scarlet, scarlet thread. The oh scarlet my. thread. Oh Whoa, that book rocked my world. Especially in talking about virgins and, and the way God designed stuff in the covenant of blood and the breaking and the flowing. and Uh-oh. That's for grown folks. Go. Man, Pastor, we we uh, we good. So, uh, um, like Mr. Cynthia was saying, Joseph. We 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 talk about even like Pastor was preaching on Joseph. We look at the life of Joseph. Joseph, yeah, he had great favor on his life, the coat of many colors, but that that favor came with uh, cause. Yeah. So we look at the favor of him, but we don't look at the breaking. It, because of him, he was broken. He was broken. He was thrown in a pit by his people that was jealous of him. Mm -hmm. Then he was went into Potiphar house. His wife uh, lied on him. Then from there went to the prison. Then the one that he helped out in the prison, supposed to remember him, don't remember him. Come on. Until, it, until it, all of them about to get killed again. Now you want to call on him. Yeah, yeah. But at the self same time, because of all of that, he had to, Joseph had to be in a proper position. He just didn't save his family because of the famine, but he saved the whole entire world because of the famine. Yes. But he had to go through the pain. We yes. look at da David is another one. David is the one who, uh, where Saul failed, what Psalm 51, uh, uh -huh. where, where Saul failed, David got it right. 
Saul didn't repent to God. Saul tried to repent to Samuel, but David repent to God. Yes. But he went through a process of being broken. It's mm -hmm. the brokenness. It, it, brokenness. It's, it's in that brokenness. We don't want to go through the brokenness right. of God. It, mm -hmm. it just like that's what we, we quote the scripture where a cone, of, uh, a cone falls into the ground and it has to die. Right. But what that is, the outer shell of that cone has to die. Right. It has to be broken. And we don't yep. want to go through the broken process. Right. It's the Amen. brokenness that we have mm -hmm. to go through that the oil could begin to flow, like the alabaster box. You know, yeah. the woman with the alabaster box, yeah, yeah. everybody looking at the alabaster box. It wasn't about what the alabaster box, it was about what was in the alabaster yeah. box, which was the the oil. oil. It's the oil. We want the oil. Salvation is free. I tell people all the time when I'm talking to them, salvation is free, but but the anointing is going to cost you your entire life. Your it's going to cost you. It's, mm -hmm. it's not free. Yes. I mean, the gospel, yeah, salvation, yeah, that that's free, but for you to actually walk in and do what yeah, God called you to walk in, you want mm -hmm. oil? People say, I want to be like this person, I want to be like that person, uh -uh. but you don't know the price of the oil Come that they on. had to go through. That's you, I said. You, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't really cost. know. You got to be careful about that. You know, and that's why now, it's like now, and, and even early on, she's ministering to say it so much because even like now, God is taking me back. So uh, this morning, God woke me up, and I he, I went to uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and it says, Stand fast in the liberty of the, of the, stand fast in the liberty whereby Christ has set you free. What well, that word liberty, right, it goes in, you go, it skips down, and it tells you what liberty is. Yes. The liberty that he wants us to stand in, which comes in us when we receive Christ, is the law of love. Yes. The law of love comes on the inside. He wants yeah. us to stand fast in a pure heart of pure love heart. so that we can live, so that we can be a pure witness for him. Amen. And as the Holy Spirit began to open my eyes, it was like, oh, my goodness. I don't read that scripture so many times, right. but this morning I saw it in a different, I saw it Come in on. a different light. And the whole thing is the whole gospel, the whole salvation, everything is the law of love. Mm -hmm. So in Corinthians, I'm sorry, in Corinthians it says that, you know, the greatest is, you know, love, hope, and faith, right? So love is the greatest motivator love. and faith is the great activator. Right. So we are saved by faith through love, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to have love has to be our motivator for our faith to work properly. Yep. So if love is not motivating why we want to have stuff, then it's, it's, in, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. not God. It's out of God's will mm -hmm. because love has to be the foundation, right. has to be the foundation for mm -hmm. our faith to work right. We are yep. saved by grace through what? Grace. For the faith. Saying? It's faith. by faith. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it has to be. But what that faith is built on, it's built on the love of Christ. It's built on the love of Christ. Where were you, where were you when grace appeared? Where were you, if you can think back, where were you when God's grace appeared? And what was your reaction? Did you recognize the grace? Did you straightway give him praise and thank him? Where were you when grace appeared? And when was the last time you thanked God for not showing you what you was going to have to go through? Or we would have been, I'm good right here. I ain't going through that, God. I ain't about to be broken like that. But every day I get up, thank you for your grace. I'm grateful. Amen. So here we go. That's, I'm, amen. Cause, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Did you have something? <laughs> amen. <laughs> Amen. So again, we off? We off? Yeah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for salvation, grace. We thank you for, for repentance. We thank you for conversion. We thank you for regeneration, God, in our lives, God. And we thank you for this time, this fellowship, this Bible study, God. And we thank you for your spirit in this place, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.